Many people with Graves' disease have received a radioactive iodine uptake test. This test involves a person swallowing a small dosage of radioactive iodine. The thyroid gland in turn will absorb the radioactive iodine and this is then evaluated after 6 hours and then once again after 24 hours. Many endocrinologists use the radioactive iodine uptake test to come up with their diagnosis of Graves' disease. However, it's important to understand that this test does not conclude that someone has this autoimmune hyperthyroid condition. If the results of the uptake test is high, then this shows that the thyroid gland is secreting an excessive amount of thyroid hormone, and in many instances, the person with the high uptake test will have Graves' disease. This test can also determine the presence of hot and cold nodules, which can give the doctor an idea as to whether they are benign or malignant, so these are some of the benefits of this test. But while the radioactive iodine uptake test can be helpful, the only surefire method to confirm that someone has Graves' disease is by having positive TSH receptor antibodies. TSI antibodies are the primary type, as if someone has these antibodies, then this 100% confirms that they have Graves' disease. However, these antibodies can fluctuate, and as a result, about 25% of the time these antibodies are negative in people who have Graves' disease. In other words, just because someone tests negative for these antibodies doesn't mean they don't have Graves' disease. So when should someone obtain the radioactive iodine uptake test? I get this question asked a lot as people are concerned about receiving even small dosages of radioactive iodine, and so if someone has a low TSH and or high free T3 and T free T4 levels, they want to know if they should obtain this test. Now I of course can't tell them what they should do, but in my opinion this test is frequently unnecessary. If someone tests positive for TSI antibodies, then there really isn't any good reason to obtain the radioactive iodine uptake test. Sure, I can also detect the presence of nodules, but so can an ultrasound, and a fine needle aspiration is necessary to confirm whether any nodules are malignant, as a radioactive iodine uptake test won't give this information. But what if someone has negative TSI antibodies? Well, if someone tests negative for TSI antibodies, then perhaps it makes a little more sense to obtain a radioactive iodine uptake test. Now, I personally would rather have the person wait a couple of months and get the TSI retested again, and then if it's negative, I would be more open to them getting the uptake test. But then again, what it really comes down to is whether or not a positive or negative uptake test will make a difference in your treatment plan. For example, if you plan on taking a conventional route, if you have a low TSH and or high thyroid hormone levels, usually the recommendations will be either antithyroid medication or radioactive iodine, regardless of what, what, what the radioactive iodine uptake test shows. Now, perhaps some endocrinologists will be more conservative and recommend antithyroid drugs instead of radioactive iodine if someone has positive thyroid blood tests, but has a negative radioactive iodine uptake test. If this is the case, then you might decide it's worth getting the test. So this may be something to discuss with your endocrinologist, as you probably want to find out exactly why he or she is doing this test, and how a positive or negative result will affect his or her recommendations. So are there risks of receiving the radioactive iodine uptake test? I honestly don't know whether there are serious long-term risks of receiving this test. Even though this test uses a small dosage of radioactive iodine and does not obliterate the thyroid gland like radioactive iodine treatment does, this does not mean that it's completely harmless. I'd be hesitant to take anything with the word radioactive in it unless if it was absolutely necessary. Of course, any endocrinologist who recommends this test will tell you it's safe and most probably believe this to be the case. But I'd still be cautious about receiving this test, especially if the TSI antibodies came out positive. This once again will confirm that you have Graves' disease, and if you're concerned about thyroid nodules, you can always get an ultrasound. In summary, the radioactive iodine uptake test will not confirm the presence or absence of Graves' disease. The only test that will do this is a test for thyroid antibodies. And if this test is positive, then there probably isn't a good reason to receive the, the radioactive iodine uptake test. And even if the test for thyroid, thyroid antibodies is negative, you still want to question your endocrinologist and find out what approaches he or she would take if the radioactive iodine uptake test were to come back positive or negative. To receive more natural health tips on hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, please visit the website gravesdiseasebook.com where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How to Treat Hyperthyroidism and Graves' Disease Through Natural Methods. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. 
You also might want to check out my recently released book entitled Natural Treatment Solutions for Hyperthyroidism and Graves Disease, which you can find on Amazon or the Barnes & Noble website. And this is a real book and not just an ebook that I quickly put together. Thank you for watching this presentation, as I hope you found the information to be valuable.